beyond the seas, pure as a child, moral as love. I remained of hope, no silver gold. I'm the This was what I had been doing in Istanbul for living and not just belting out like a drama queen saying that I will be free and I'm free. It's not about that. It was about me composing for constitutions, for kind of companies and people to hear their own soundtracks. If you look to the initial letters of this composition, its, its name is The Epic Devotion Gets to Ted with the initial letters and I composed that song, Dedicate for the Sake of Ted which was like two or three days ago. So it also, when I was a little kid, around the age of six or seven, when I had my little piano in my room, and after each break of commercials from my favorite TV series, I was running to my piano and starting to compose and improvise some things that I had just heard at that moment, hoping that I could contribute to my life with involving some soundtracks of my own life. I was basically trying to be the John Williams of my life, which was a result of watching too much Star Wars. <laughs> but, basically, I have found something that could be defined as the gap between creativity and the business life. So throughout my life, I had this separated two bunch of people who were suggesting me two different things. One of sight was telling me that I should have gone for art, music, composition, writing soundtracks and just getting rid of the old materialistic understanding of our lives. Whereas on the other hand, I had these people who were suggesting me to be 
materialistic, get rid of creativity, what will you do with classical piano when you have this full opportunity when, uh, when universities are providing you the classes on business administration, economics, mathematics and materials? I had nothing wrong between those two statements, but my question was, why am I not permitted to do both? Why, I, why can't I be both? I could be running a business at the same time when I was playing my piano. And more interestingly, I could compose for businesses and I could compose for people to hear their own soundtracks. So I started to question myself accordingly and when I was tackling with that, <coughs> with that statement, when I was running on the streets of Istanbul when I was around the age of 16, I came across with a big billboard message stating a big question. What would you do if you weren't afraid? And I was struck by the expression of that. So I want you to give yourselves a minute right now. What would you really do if you weren't afraid? And if I want to improve that statement a little bit more, what would we do if we weren't hesitant at all? Yes, maybe asking that guy or girl to go for a date. Um, you know, throw something to the current TED speaker, which I currently encourage you not to do right now. <laughs> Well, what about our tendencies? What about our personality? What about our expressions? Do you think there might be a bond between creativity and expression? For example, the more creative we get, maybe it could be possible, the more expressive we become. I'm on the side which supports that, yes, this is possible. And the more we neglect creativity out of the business and expression and individuality, we're swamping. We're just, we're punching crucial things on the statement of art. When I was in high school, I was preparing myself for the university and I ended up at the Istanbul Bilgi University, as stated. And I was studying media and communications, basically because I thought that studying media was a middle point of music, arts and business. So I thought that maybe studying media would be a convergent thinking to me, for me to get involved in the scope of business and creative thinking. Um, despite lots of rhetoric suggests that creative people can't be managed, and um, despite also many discourse and rhetoric suggests that there is no such a thing called creative strategy, I was aiming to find myself in this process of no, we can integrate and intertwine creativity with expression and creativity with business. So I reminded myself, what should I do? Because I was feeling lost in my university life within the first month because I had nothing to do with, with art. I was studying media theory and I was reading Bourdieu, Adorno and all this Marshall McLuhan um, things. And I just thought that maybe going for this cool radio would be a great idea. I kept this idea until I found out we didn't have one. So, I wrote a letter to the dean, a petition, saying that I can lead in order to establish a school radio. And at, until that moment and on, onwards, I had nothing to do with management and business enterprise. But all I did have was my will to create something creative. So I had five student friends who were assisting, assisting me on that matter and all of them were coming from different fields of art, from theatre, drama, music like me, creative thinking, divergent thinking and visual arts. And what did I see with them was this amazing scope of field when we created that because we weren't actually running a business, we were composing a business where us, musicians, were coming up with jingles, the theatre people were writing the scripts and the visual artists were creating the logos and all of the um, materials that would be enabled as visual. So I think that when it's allowed, creativity can change the whole scope of business and it is better for us to think a bit more how creative we get during our business structure. 
During my second year in university, I started to perform in special occasions and events and talks. And under the favor of my student friends, I was invited to a conference in order to promote the understanding of English teaching in Turkey at the Bosphorus University, Istanbul. And I was asked to come up with some creative ideas, not like just playing a song and opening ceremony and something that could be relatable with the event. First, I was thinking to come up with the well-known song ABC by the Jackson 5, just because I think it promotes a great message in order to learn English. But I just did let myself to revive through this creativity. And I composed my first special dedicated music like that. It was called Thank You. So amongst my, my, my peers and my student friends, we saw that there was a huge gap between creativity and business. Because when I was playing at the Bosphorus University and when I dedicated my song, this was how it turned out to be afterwards. It was an album by me dedicated for a digital health summit in Turkey. So this gap in the business life, when it's allowed, when creativity is allowed to integrate, can create miracles. People were struck by it, fascinated. Imagine yourselves getting into a talking or a conference, and just front of you, there is, an out there is a bunch of albums and recordings that's specifically created for that event. And within them, there are some notes specifically written how this creativity and this innovation can change the whole scope of the understanding of business life when it's given the chance. So, in May 2014, I got a phone call from one of the partner organizations of Youth in Action of the EU, kindly encouraging me to check out an organization called Roots and Roots, which was based in Cologne, Germany. And I, I read, read upon it on the internet and I was struck by the whole aim of the project. Now imagine a collaboration, a business that promotes cultural diversity in the scope of, in the scope of contemporary arts and media and involving many talents from selected multicultural neighborhoods at the EU and non-EU, but EU at the same time like my country, Turkey. And, <laughs> yeah, that's a dilemma, I know. And, and trying to find something, some special content that could be delivered without talking like every politicians do. The idea of last year was immigration. And the management team from Roots and Roots wanted us to come up with some creative ideas which could be correspondent to the idea of, of immigration. And what we encountered with was a miracle. We spent two weeks in Germany and um, it was such a fascinating process how musicians, theatre people, acting, actors and, and visual artists were hard, working so hard in order to create something unique. And nothing in my life felt way better than involving in that kind of liberating process because my soul was set free. It was like a spa for our, for our creative individuality and, and own scope. So we performed for two times in Germany and at the end of the each performance there was a standing ovation. And we did nothing but talk, um, thinking constantly in order to create and deliver some message that could be relatable with our current politics. It was not only immigration, it was also about the, the freedom of women, it was about the freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And we were given the chance of expressing ourselves through our art. And after that, I ended up at Warwick, which was another asset, I believe. So coming to that crucial point again, Considering that art and creativity is actually something that enables youth, young people, to engage with the current scope of business. And knowing that creativity revives through knowing that when we make sure we're not afraid and we're not hesitant to lead a change, to lead an innovation, even though we know that we'll fa fail eventually. With knowing that, 
I want to give ourselves a minute right now on what would we really do if you weren't afraid and hesitant at all. Thank you.